To say I wanted to run screaming from the voodoo shop was an understatement. I wanted to run screaming to a gas station for some gas to burn this fucker down. But instead I just sorta kept begging Riley if we could leave. Like a little kid begging his mom about something. Mostly because I didn't want to leave her anywhere near this place. She had seemed ready to go, but when Sinclair walked through those doors, she was hellbent on talking to him. Ryan for his part had just finished ringing up Becky, when two more of her friends showed up with items to buy. Prolonging our stay at the shop, and only adding to my sense of dread and fear. My eyes kept darting over towards the manager's office, and just causing me to instinctively bite at my fingernails. Something I haven't done in years. Travis, are you okay? Riley asked me, after she was done talking with her friends about Sinclair arriving at the voodoo shop. And now that she was done I could tell that she knew something was wrong with me. Wasn't that hard, I looked like I was about to have a full-on mental breakdown. And I was. I just wanna leave. I quickly told her, forcing my finger out of my mouth, before I ripped the whole nail off. Is it okay, if I just go? I asked her, looking over at her, and forcing my hands into my pockets, to keep them from fidgeting like crazy. Yeah. I'm sorry to be keeping you. We're close enough to our dorms where it's safe. She said, looking at me with just a hint of concern in her eyes. I nodded quickly, and was starting to move towards the exit, when the door to the office opened, and I instinctively froze in place. Mr. Sinclair. Riley's excited voice came from behind me as she quickly rushed over towards the gloomy well-dressed man. He looked over at her, and made a face, that said he had just stepped on something disgusting. You are far too loud. He told her, as he clutched his umbrella looking like he wanted to bash it over Riley's head. What do you want, girl? Sinclair hissed, his eyes narrowing, and obviously annoyed that he had to socialize. I kinda felt bad. Oh? Riley sputtered, clearly taken aback by Sinclair's attitude. I just uh. I'm a follower of your work, and I hope one day you'll hire me at Somber. She said, most of the confidence disappearing from her voice. HM. The man mumbled, coming over to her and looking at her. Perhaps. And with that, he walked past her, and headed towards me in the exit. He stared straight ahead and past me. His hands reached out to grab the door. Suddenly I felt a horrible chill across my body, and my legs began to move on their own. It wasn't like when the strings controlled me. This was like some force was physically making my legs move. I stared back at Riley and Brain as if they could save me, but neither of them was paying attention. Your Travis? Sinclair asked when the two of us were outside. He opened up his umbrella and stepped underneath it. Whatever was forcing my legs to move next moved up to my arms, and gripped them tightly. They kept me from moving as Sinclair walked around me, examining me like I was on display. Yeah. I assume you work with King Creel? I asked him, panting hard as I tried to act tough. Whatever was holding me still suddenly reached out and covered my mouth. I gagged and started coughing as whatever it was that was now covering my mouth was slimy, and smelled like rotting flesh. I'll make this quick, since I could give a rat's ass about that voodoo freak, Sinclair said, stepping closer to me, and getting right in my face. You're fucked. So fucked that you're better off just laying down, and accepting what's in store for you. He spat at me. His sunken tired eyes were suddenly alive with rage and murderous intent. Only reason I'm helping that idiot is that you fucked with my supply of addicts. You brought this on yourself you stupid little shit. Sinclair growled turning his back to me and walking off underneath his umbrella. Whatever was keeping me in place finally let go and allowed me to dry heave and cough violently as I watched him leave. As I did so, I watched as what I thought was his shadow slither into the shadow that the umbrella had been making. Why did I ever get involved in all this crap? First a living voodoo doll and now a freak with a moving shadow. Standing up and staggering my way back to the dorm I entered it and collapsed to the couch, panting hard and rubbing my face hard. Sinclair's threats caused it, so I couldn't even rest there for long without being afraid and standing, so I could just pace the dorm in fear and paranoia.
Any little creak that came from the woods sent me flinching in fear. So when the front door opened up I nearly shat myself but calmed down when I saw it was Brian. Jesus man, you look like crap, he said with concern in his voice, coming over and slowly coaxing me to sit down on the couch while he made me something to calm down. My hands trembled as I softly took the cup of coffee from him. What happened? I saw that Sinclair dude talking to you from inside the shop. He knows about Krill. I stammered taking a soft sip of the coffee, being careful so that it wouldn't leak out of my neck. H is some kind of freak like Krill that. I looked back over at Brian who was sitting a good couple of feet away from me. HM? Well, your friend Riley certainly seemed to think something was up with him. Well, your friend Riley certainly seemed to think something was up with him. From all the shit I've seen about him he's usually like one of those cherry assholes who donates all their money to charity and shit. Guess we caught a glimpse at the real him. Brian said, taking a long sip of his coffee. I stared down at mine, and swirled it around a bit. It needed more sugar, but I didn't want to bother Brian about it at that moment. He said I was fucked. So whatever Creel is planning, must really be something that's gonna fuck me up royally. I chuckled a little, more so to stop me from having a mental breakdown. Even going to college and this asshole is still finding a way to fuck with me. I sighed hard and took another small sip of my coffee. I'm sorry dude, I'm doing my best to try and help you. But this is really beyond both of our comprehension. Can't you ask that one voodoo god dude help you out? He asked me, setting his empty mug on the table, and reaching out for his controller. I wouldn't even know how to begin to summon him. I only knew how to talk to him back home, because I accidentally ran into him. I guess when Alexandra comes here tomorrow she can help me. I sighed hard, and rubbed my face more, not giving a crap about my makeup since it was just the two of us. Oh cool, your family is coming. I can't wait to meet them. Brian said just a little bit of excitement building up in his throat. I looked over at him and smiled. It would be a nice little escape, to have Alexandra and Livy here to help me fight off Creel. Alright, man. I'm gonna be here if you need anything. Brian assured me, offering me a fist bump which I returned with a smile. Walking over to my room and carefully closing the barely held together door. I was in the process of taking off the last of my foundation when I heard scurrying under my bed. I spun on my heels and quickly looked towards my bed, reaching out and grabbing the nearest thing I could use as a weapon. Although I don't know how well a stick of deodorant was going to help me. Quickly looking underneath my bed I was more scared to find nothing there. Quickly pulling up from underneath the bed I looked around quickly, clutching my deodorant. I climbed into bed and looked around my room for a couple of hours until I finally drifted off to sleep. The fact I didn't have any kind of nightmare or any kind of dream at all that night however sent me awake in a mere instance. I looked around my room and making sure I wasn't asleep, I tried punching myself awake. Needless to say. A throbbing cheek later showed that I was indeed awake. Slowly climbing out of bed and still clutching my deodorant I carefully exited to the common room and saw that it was indeed the next day. Brian worked early today so I was left in the dorm by myself for the time being. I pulled my phone out and dialed Alexandra, hoping that she was near to the college. I really would rather have someone here than suffer in the dorm by myself. Travis. Olivia's happy voice shouted at me after a couple of seconds of the dialing noise. She is like the world's greatest stress ball. It took all my fear and anxiety away. You're on speaker. Mommy's driving right now. She said with nothing but excitement. Hello, Travis. We are about an hour and a half away from you. Alexandra told me. She had been spending her free time learning how to drive a car. She certainly was better at it than I was, but that isn't saying much. But she can drive safely, so that's really all that matters. Sounds good. I'll be waiting in my dorm for you guys. I said, taking a seat on the couch, and just hoping that nothing horrible happened to me in that amount of time. After all, was said and done I was once again left alone in the dorm.
Sighing and trying to keep my cool, I elected to just turn the TV on and just distract myself. I pulled up Netflix and just put on anything so I could have some noise to keep me distracted. I also pulled out some of the work I had to do for class and started doing it. It worked so well in fact, that when I heard knocking at my dorm room I almost believed that it was some random person or worse. But looking at my phone I saw it was about the time when Olivia and Alexandra were going to show up. Standing up and opening the door for them, I was quickly hugged by Olivia. Travis, me and Tempe missed you. She shouted nuzzling her face into my stomach. Smiling and showing me the little voodoo template that had once been the way I had checked into work. I smiled and patted her little blonde head. You look well, Travis, Alexandra told me, her soft motherly smile greeting me as she entered my dorm, and also gave me a hug. I returned the favor, and had them sit down on the couch. I got up, and got them some refreshments which just boiled down to some water in a glass of ice. I'm living it up in college. I don't know what it means, Travis Alexander told me after I had explained everything that had been happening to me. I sighed as I looked at her and Olivia. How could Creole have dragged himself out of hell? Or wherever it was that Baron Samedi had sent him. Tempe says that he doesn't know either. Olivia said, holding the old doll up. I sighed at that as well. I would have hoped that Tempe would know something about that. So we really were in the dark. I sighed and reached out for my glass of water, when Brian's bedroom door opened, and he came stumbling out of his room. Hey, dude. I thought you worked today. I told him, sitting up a bit and only a bit confused and concerned by it. Seeing him stumbling around a bit, I would have thought he was drunk, but it really didn't even seem like that. It was like he was being pulled along by something. I wanted to, but I couldn't. He said his voice showing that he was straining against something. And it was revealed what that was when Preston Brooks came up behind Brian. I stood up quickly, and Alexandra did as well. Olivia, reading the room, quickly shuffled to hide behind me. Good morning, Preston said, a voodoo doll in his hand, when that looked exactly like Brian. Please have a seat, I'll only take a moment of your time. He said with a calm chuckle, forcing Brian to walk over near us as he walked over towards the door. Hand over the template doll, and I'll be on my way. He said, holding his hand out for Tempe. Like hell, I will I said back to him, pushing Olivia behind me some more. I knew there was something wrong with you. I hissed, looking around for any kind of weapon. I was really wishing that we had glass cups. At least for some kind of weapon. Oh, far more than just something, Travis. Preston chuckled, which turned into hard and violent coughs. Not being able to grab a handkerchief he covered his mouth with his hand. And when he finished and pulled his hand back, a long sticky black ooze followed it. I don't have much time. Just give me the fucking doll. He shouted at us, much more panicked. Travis, I don't think it would be wise to give him the doll, Alexander told me. As badly as I wanted to be sarcastic towards her, now was neither the time nor the place to be my usual asshole self. Preston gripped the voodoo doll tightly, and I could tell Brian felt it as he hitched his breath and struggled to breathe. The doll, or your stupid roommate gets it. He shouted grabbing the voodoo Brian's head and clutching it. Brian stared at me, obviously conflicted since it was obvious giving him Tempe was a terrible idea. But at the same time, it was obvious that he didn't want to die. I turned to Olivia and she looked back at me, carefully handing the doll to me. He says it's okay. She whispered to me. Though it was obvious that she was going to miss it. I sighed and took the doll from her, moving over towards Preston, holding Tempe up and handing it over to him. Tempe usually has plenty of tricks up his sleeves. So I was hoping he had something. Give it to me. He hissed, the goop dripping down his chin. I handed it off to him. He took Tempe and shoved Brian away from him. I caught him as he went limp. I held him up, and helped him over to Alexandra who took him quickly. Though by her looks she wasn't all that happy, that I had given Tempe to Preston. I was sort of vindicated in my choice, when Preston cried out in pain. We all looked over as Tempe had produced little razor blade claws, and began slicing the man's hand up. He soon dropped the doll, which quickly scurried away under the couch. No, 
Crescent shouted, getting down on his hands and knees, and trying to get at Tempe, before he got out of his grasp. But he was soon stopped by another round of coughs, that brought him to the floor. Ah fuck, and no I need more time. The man shouted, wheezing and struggling up to his feet. We all braced for what was about to happen, Olivia still hiding behind me. And Alexandra tending to Brian on the couch. And Tempe sticking his head out to watch what was happening. Preston panted hard as he coughed more and more, soon it sounded less and less dry, as the black ooze spilled out of his mouth mixed with blood. And then a hand shot out of his mouth. Not just a regular hand. One that had long fingers and claws attached to it. It was the first time I heard Alexandra actually scream in terror. Here I saw that her usual calm manner was completely destroyed by this horrible scene. Preston collapsed to his knees as the hand began to pull itself further out, revealing a wrist and arm attached to it. And it was only then that it hit me who that arm belonged to. And it was confirmed when Preston's back split open with a sickening crunch and tears. And a long gangly creature stood up from the remains. Besides the arm that had the head wrapped around it, we all knew exactly what it was in front of us. Travis, my boy. Did you miss me? Creel chuckled as he stepped forward. But this wasn't normal Creel. It was the Creel from my nightmares. He tilted his head at me, a sickening horrid smile on his face. He was back. And his horrifying look matched his sadistic personality.